Okay, that illustrates that key of E. Let's look at one more chord before we move on to a different key. Um, this is the seven chord, basically, like a five chord over the seven in the bass. But if we move this whole shape down two frets, a whole step, then that's a flat seven chord, okay? That would be like the D. So we have... Uh, Slide down to the to the four and slide back up to the one. And a song like uh, I will worship. Slide down two frets with all of my heart. Just try that again. Go back up to the one. I will worship. Slide down two frets with all of my heart. Slide down to the four chord. I ah, see that's just whoosh, trying to nail that bass note. Mm, all of your way. Let's go to the chorus and illustrate. Here we go again. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my. There's that flat seven, again, very, very effective. And the beauty of this concept, again, the open chord concept, is that we're just moving these shapes up and down the neck. And what that does is minimize wrist movement. You know, as guitar players, we have to change chords. We only have like a half a second, if that, to change chords many times. So we're trying to do all we can do to avoid doing things like this, where we're all this extra wrist movement. We're trying to just go along with the laws of physics, minimizing wrist movement, allowing us to just go to different chords. Without having to, to readjust our wrists, so to speak. So let's take this same concept and let's go up a half step using a capo. Again, don't feel like capos are a cop out. You know, if you were raised playing guitar and made to feel like you were less of a man if you used a capo. I just want to dispel that myth because capos are a very useful tool to, for us to take advantage of this. Instead of all of a sudden we're in the key of F and we have to, here we went from E to all these wonderful open voicings and now all of a sudden the song's in the key of F and we have to go, oh man, bummer. And all of a sudden we end up playing first position chords like this, F to B flat, C, and then back to F. That, that's pretty tough compared to just capoing the first fret and then just adjusting all these chords up a fret, okay? So we just move that up to, in this case, F would be right there on the eighth fret. That's where my index finger is, so that's F. There's B flat, two, and then up to C. C sus, back to F. So we can play all those same songs in a different key. Or let's say that particular day, man, I, gee, I wish I could play that song in G today. You know, well, instead of having to relearn all the chords, just put the capo on the third fret and adjust by finding that first chord. There it is, all the way up on the 10th fret. Your index finger's on the 10th fret. So. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. It's a little bit high for congregations, but maybe you're doing a, a solo and you just would like to get the song in a higher range. Well, just use that, use the same concept. Uh, or, or songs that maybe the key of E would be a little low. Uh, like this, I'm thinking of Amazing Grace, let's say. A lot of times that's Amazing Grace. Works good in the key of G. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch 
like me. Now there's the five chord. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. I mean, oh God, you are my God. Same shapes, you're just you've just adjusted it with a capo. I will ever praise you. Lord, I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step, you'll lead me. I will follow you all of my days. Man, I just want to keep playing. I just want to keep playing all these different songs that are in these keys. Flat seven. Let's go back down. I'm just giving a couple different examples. Up-tempo songs. Um, for our latest project, the whole song was built around this open chord concept. I just purposely kind of almost every chord is involved. When all the earth will sing your praises. So it goes one, five up to six. Four down to two, two up to four, and so it's you lived, you died, you said in three days you would rise, you did, you're alive. Up to one, you rule, you reign, you said you're coming back again, I know. Up to four, back to one, five up to six, two down, four down to two, up to four, and back to one. And while we're here, in this voicing, look at all these little things you can, mm -hmm. there's a five over a one chord. And then here's another way, instead of sliding all the way down to the six, here's another possibility is going one, that's five over seven, and then look at this, this finger right here can just go. It's the same voicing as the two and the three, but it's another way to play a six minor. So, one, walking down. Also, while we're at it, here's the one, and if you play the same shape, but you take off your index finger, it's another way of playing a four chord. So instead of going all the way down to playing the four there, you can also play the four right here. Just make sure you attack the correct bass note in your right hand. So we're going uh, um, like to the four, back to the one. Hitting the low E, now let's go to the A. See the A is in the bass, now the E is in the bass. Attack the A. Hear that? E's in the bass. Now the A's. Now let's put the C sharp in the bass. Put the B in the bass. A in the bass. I mean, look at that. We're just not even. We're not even moving our hand. Just it's very convenient. Oh, I could sing. Of you now. Mm -hmm. When you just want to worship the Lord and just sing out a melody. You don't have to be moving your wrist around. Just stay right here. Yeah, I lift my heart to you. I will sing a new song to the Lord. He is my God. You are my King. Mm -hmm. Five down the four. 
I was just thinking of a song you could do. You know, hungry, I come walk down to six for I know satisfied. I mean, I'm belaboring the point. I could just play probably a hundred songs using this concept, but I just encourage you to take out your songbook, take out all the songs that you currently know now, and that you're, you're sort of stuck, you're chained to your songbook. Every time you open, every time you want to play a song, you feel like you have to run to your songbook and you have to play it just like they say to play it. Well, with this concept, it, it'll slowly wean you from having to be dependent on a songbook because these chords, these concepts are in so many songs. Instead of, instead of trying to play these standard voicings like, it, like they have in the songbooks, try to find the song's voicings with this concept. Try to find those chords using this concept. Go ahead and, if you move this up to G, go ahead and, and create a chart. In fact, you can, you can download the chart for free on our website, but it'll show you that when you're in the key of G and you're playing this, that would be the one, so that's a G, that's an A minor, that would be a, a G over B, and there's a C chord right there, and then there's a, a D minor, and then back to G right there. Okay, you could even go as high as an A, I mean, I'm just, while we're, while we're at it, just go all the way up to A, it starts to get a little... But again, maybe one of the guitar players on your worship team is playing down here in standard position. If you're a little more experienced, you can go ahead and capo up, play the same song but in a higher voicing, and it's almost mandolin-like if you play up here, like... Let's see, you know... Blessed be your name Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name I mean again, think of all the songs you know in the key of A Go ahead and write out songs like, you know, um, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. Go ahead and find these chords with all the songs that you currently know. All I am, so won't you reign in me again. love that. I just love all the common tones. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. I mean, I could just go on and on this whole video, just playing songs that we already know, but take the time and find the chords for the songs that you already know. Find them using this concept. Okay, now it's your turn. I want to give you a little bit of homework so you can cement these concepts in your mind and in your hands. Um, I, I've got my little metronome here, and I just want to encourage you, whenever you practice, to practice with a metronome because it'll just make your practice times way more efficient. Instead of just working on your, your, your voicings, if you're practicing with a metronome, you're working on your voicings, your strumming, your timing, you're doing a lot of things at once, and it makes it a lot more efficient. So, in this particular, you know, there's, this is a Boss Dr. Beat that I've had for years and years. And, you know, you can get one of those little Seiko ones for $25 with a, just has a little dial on it. Either one will do, but just something that will ingrain that sense of time in your heart. Because if you ever hope to play with a band, and many of you already do, or if you want to lead worship more effectively, you need to have that sense of time ingrained in your own mind, in your own heart, so that as you're playing, even without a metronome, when you're leading others, you can hear that in your head. Because you've spent so much time practicing with it, 
but even without the metronome, you can kind of hear it in your head. Tick, 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 tick. So I want to give you some homework to do, and I remember practicing with a metronome all the time, just trying to be able to, you know, get better at playing some of these simple chords. Really, at the time, they were fairly simple, and yet I couldn't seem to play in time. And I remember just working with a metronome and slowing it all the way down to like 60 beats per minute. It was like one, two, three, four, one, two. And, you know, I was just amazed at how difficult it was to play in time. And I would already been, I was playing lead and playing rock bands and all this stuff, and yet when it came to just do a simple, man, I just couldn't do it. So, but I remember this prayer one day. I just said, Lord, it just seems like I'm almost wasting time just working with this thing. It's so boring. But I just remember, just my prayer was, God, I just want to be able to get to the point where my timing and my voicings and the mechanical side of playing guitar becomes automatic, where I'm not thinking about changing the chords or playing in time, but that I'd actually be able to, to pray while I'm playing or begin to sing a new song to the Lord. getting ahead there. I need to work on it. But just to be able to, you know what I mean, you know the difference, right? Where, you know, sometimes our goal can just be to get through the song without making a mistake. And in the beginning, you know, that's a worthy goal. But we want to get to the point where this becomes second nature. We can read the Psalms while we're playing our guitars. Begin to sing out a new song to the Lord. Sing out a new song to Him. Or just reading things out of your journal. And being able to just pray. I would just try to play in time and read the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. Why so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope in God. Bless the Lord. He's the lifter of my countenance. Bless the Lord. He's the lifter of my head. And then I practiced little worship leader exhortations, you know, while I was playing in time. Psalm 95 says, Come, let's sing for joy to the Lord. And let's shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. For the Lord our God is a great God the great king above all gods. So I'm trying to model this for you in a sense. I'm trying to give you a homework assignment, doing several things at once, making sure that you're playing some of these chords that we just went over on the open chord concept, playing them to a metronome. Find uh, you know, a tempo that you're comfortable with. You know, some of you can you know, get up to 70 there, but even sometimes playing very slow can be very difficult because we, we have a tendency to want to rush. So start with 60 beats per minute or 70 beats per minute and work with that for a while. And then maybe go up to 100 beats per minute and just practice all downstrokes like... Try that, and then you know. It's like kind of a Celtic. So do that and start listening. I'm going to list some of the songs of on this DVD where you can actually just put them together and make one long medley. Okay, a lot of these songs are in the same keys or can be. You know, I could sing of your love forever. Better is one day. Open the eyes of my heart. They're all can be played in the key of E or they can be capoed and played in F. Some of them can be played as high as G and still be in that congregational range. So the exercise would be make a list of 10, 15, 20 songs that you know pretty well and that you, you've begun to work out and find the open chords to 
and then write them out and then with the metronome try to just go from one song to the next smoothly and so that it's not you know one song and stopping one another song and stopping but there's this just constant medley of over the mountains and the sea and better is one day and as you do let me briefly talk about the right hand concept Okay, there are several different picks you can use. I have, I have three here on my lap. Um, this is a thick one, and listen carefully to the difference. The difference that, uh, that the thickness of the pick can make. So, try to hear that, do you hear that? It's not as flexible, it's a little, now here's one that's a little bit thinner. It has a little bit more give to it. Now here's a, thinner one, and this is for when I'm going to do a song that has a lot of just open chords, I prefer a slightly thinner pick, and can you hear that? A little bit more of the snap of the pick. Can you hear that? So here's, here's an exercise. Set the metronome to like 70 beats per minute, and with a, a pick that's as thin as you're comfortable with, try all down strokes. One, two, up to the six. One and two and three and four and one. And all down strokes. That's an important skill. It sounds all of a sudden it sounds very cold play. Doesn't it kind of just all down strokes? If you've ever heard any of their songs? Just play these chords. Try to play them in time with all down strokes. 